Welcome back to Arise 360. Am I black enough? Well, that's the question many people may be asking themselves after they see a new TV special by the same name. That is right. And here with more on the special that explores exactly what it means to be black is award-winning journalist and producer Ed Gordon. Welcome to Arise 360, Ed. How are you? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I'm fine. Well, good. Well, I'm excited to see this project because it seems like the ideology of what it means to be black means different things to different people yes. in different communities. So for this project, how are you defining black and how does one know if they're black enough? Well, I'm not defining it, and that's why oh, I wanted yeah. to do it. As you all know, in our community, um, the whole idea of definition of black has been debated since they brought us here in chains. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, uh, if you're African, for instance, there's a question of whether African Americans see you as black and, and, and take you into the fold. There's always the light and dark issue. Mm -hmm. There's the biracial issue. There's the political issue. Can you be black enough if you're mm -hmm. Republican? So we explore so many different things wow. in this special and I decided that uh, we always talk about it behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about it up front uh, and, mm -hmm. and put it uh, in this special. So you talk about exploring the topic of what it means to be black, but how exactly did you go about doing that? Well, I, you know, I wanted to look at the obvious, which is skin tone in America. Right. That's the easy one. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always this sense of if you're light or dark, there's always a prejudice put upon you by our own mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting, uh, you know, but I wanted to go further than that. So why is it that we accept some African Americans who are biracial and we call them all black? Mm. Uh, and others not so much. Barack Obama is an interesting study. When he first came on the scene, there were a lot of African Americans who were a little leery. They didn't know enough about him. Mm -hmm. He was biracial. We weren't sure if he was down for the cause, quote unquote. <laughs> uh, and now, Lord knows, he's right. all black, uh -huh. right? right? And so we look at that. We look at the idea of we say we're not a monolith, but if you're a black Republican, mm. you're an outcast, quite Absolutely. frankly, particularly with this administration. Right. The whole sense of if it's only skin tone, are you telling me truly mm. that Clarence Thomas is blacker than Louis Farrakhan? Mm. So how do you define blackness? Right. And that's what we try to look at through this special. And you hear a lot of people struggling, especially people that are lighter complected, that say, you know, I'm not black enough to belong to the black community mm -hmm. and not white enough to belong to the white community. So they feel kind of stuck on in the middle on the fence in some situations. Well, and conversely, I think that we've seen uh, that play on the other side. We brought two young ladies together in their 20s. Both of them went viral. Uh, one won uh, Miss Black UT, University of Texas. Okay. She's biracial, very light. We brought another sister who was originally from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. uh, she's an Instagram model, mm -hmm. very dark. Both of them <coughs> have received prejudice from our community wow. for being too black too mm -hmm. and too light. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it runs the gamut in between. So we have, as a community, this sense of not really knowing what the true definition is and who is it that hands out this mythical black Absolutely. card we always right. talk about, right? Mm -hmm. So we explore that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a little bit of everybody from, from Sam Jackson, who talks about it being tribal. Yeah, if you go to the continent, mm -hmm. there are tribes all over that continent. Yeah. And he said, because we were all brought together, the assumption is, in America, we all should be one, but mm -hmm. there is that tribal nature running through our blood. Absolutely. So he said, you have to think about that. Cheryl Underwood talks mm -hmm. about being very, very dark. <clears throat> and how she's dealt with. Misty Copeland mm -hmm. talks about she believes if she were darker, mm -hmm. she probably wouldn't have been the mm -hmm. principal dancer right. for the American Ballet mm -hmm. Theater. So all of that, we talked to Anthony well, before Anderson. Before you go any further, I w I w we do have a clip of Misty Copeland, so I would like okay, to show sure. people so they can get an understanding of how she displays this information. Take a look. I think about the world today, and I think about you know our government and where we are, and it's like, I just want people to wake up and understand the you know, systematic racism that's in this world that I don't know if we'll ever overcome. But it's, I don't think it's about blaming our communities. It's, it's waking everyone up in the world to respect us and treat us as equal human beings. Wow. <laughs> Powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So you mentioned Samuel L. Jackson and Anthony Anderson giving you some of these stories, but what, what other stories would you say stood out to you? Well, what we did is we brought um, people who are the personification of what we talked about. So we mm -hmm. talked about uh, if you're biracial. We actually found someone, uh, Amy Barnett, who is the CCO over at the Grio. Mm -hmm. She's biracial. And she talks about her existence in that. Uh, we talked with Emil Wilbekin, who is uh, gay. 
and he talks about how oftentimes they're shunned by the African American yeah. community and how you have to deal with that. Uh, so we try to personify, we talk to Armstrong Williams, who's a mm -hmm. black Republican. Uh, so we try to personify all of these things with real people stories mm -hmm. as well as the celebrities mm -hmm. and professors who sit down and talk to us um, in a larger aspect of what black enough is. We're not here to define it. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest, mm -hmm. black enough is really, uh, as Dondre Whitfield says, it's not about skin tone or anything else. It's it's really about consciousness, mm. well, and I, that's I believe the that's the best then, description. Then what about a person like Rachel Dolezal, who is white, mm. but calls herself black? Correct. Does she then count as a black person? Well, and certainly in her mind, uh, <laughs> she did. Now, I mean, uh -huh. but that's the interesting point. How mm. do you define exactly. it? Exactly. And so that's what I think people will see in this special, because there is no definitive answer, and mm. we weren't shooting for that. What we were trying to say is we can't get hung up in it, because as Cheryl Underwood said astutely, and uh, Charlemagne the God says as well, if something jumps off, at the end of the day, whether you're light or dark, you're going to be seen by others Absolutely. as black. Mm -hmm. And that somehow we need to make sure that we understand it's all about family at the end of the day. Yeah, because I always say, regardless of how light-skinned I am, when I get pulled over by the police, <laughs> I'm a black man. That's exactly right. <laughs> and don't so, they say that one drop right. theory as well? As long and as you have talk one drop yeah. black And we in talk you. about you that. That is what uh -huh. America has been from the day we got yeah. here, you know. And so Langston Hughes wrote about that. Mm -hmm. The idea that you know, if if in fact you have one drop, mm -hmm. that's what you're considered mm -hmm. here. So why do you think this conversation is so important right now in today's society? Well, I think that there is a sense of, uh, particularly with this administration in office, uh, a, a, a want to be more inclusive amongst ourselves. There is this kind of circle the wagon mentality, mm -hmm. whether it's from this administration or uh, police brutality that we've seen. And so I think that there's so many um, important aspects of what the black community has to find within ourselves that we spend a lot of wasted time worrying about things that really are minuscule or mm -hmm. trivial and we need to be about finding ways to better ourselves. Um, D.L. Hughley and Anthony talk about people getting mad at you if you leave the hood. Mm -hmm. D.L. says, who wants to go back to the hood? Absolutely. Nobody wants to be poor and mm -hmm. live in the projects or the ghetto. The idea is don't be ashamed that you live there, mm -hmm. but you want to help others escape yeah. it and move forward. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, and you'll see at the end of the program, uh, you're able to see that there is a positive nature of us understanding that we're all one at the end of the day. Very That's true. amazing. Very true. So what other plans do you have for this special? A book tour, town hall tour perhaps? <laughs> well, you know what I always say in any special I do, I just want to elicit um, conversation mm. that I hope at the end of seeing this, you'll call somebody and say, hey, you've got to take a look at that. Mm. And then maybe at dinner or if you're hanging out at home, you start to mm. talk about some of the issues you know, that were raised. Um, it premiered on uh, Bounce, uh, last week, but it can be downloaded on the Brown Sugar app, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see it there or on the Brown Sugar website at brownsugar.com. And it's no surprise that you like this to start these conversations, because you've been an award-winning journalist for many years. You've traveled the world interviewing many luminaries. Out of your entire <laughs> career, is there one interview that stands out for you? Nelson Mandela. That's oh, easy wow. for me. Easy. That's right to easy it. For <laughs> me. Um, yeah. You know, the interview I'm most asked about, ironically, is Tupac. I mean, oh. literally, there isn't a week that goes by. I mean, uh -huh. most people see the interview we did as kind of his definitive interview. Mm. And so that one I'm asked about more often. I'm most famous for the OJ interview. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, uh, it hands down, I was able to interview Mr. Mandela on four occasions. I got wow. to know him a little bit, was able to cover his funeral. Mm -hmm. But the first time sitting down with him uh, in South Africa, in his home, mm -hmm. uh, was extraordinary for me. You know, I, as you know, Shannon, I've, I've been blessed to meet so many people. Mm -hmm. There are few people that I feel are truly extraordinary. I think we're all about the same. But mm -hmm. they're those f few kind of stars in the sky, yeah. and he was one of those. Yeah. He was extraordinary. Wow. That is impressive. So <laughs> I think of you as a sort of fire starter, because like Shannon said, you ignite conversations mm -hmm. for society engaging, and you've interviewed so many amazing people already, but if you were to land your dream interview that you haven't already secured, who would it be? I don't have one. You know, I get wow. that question a lot, and um, I, 
part of that is I've been blessed to interview so many people. But the mm -hmm. other is I think it changes from, from, from day to day, week mm -hmm. to week, month to month. Uh, you know, somebody you might have really wanted to interview two years ago isn't necessarily as relevant today, mm -hmm. and someone else is more relevant, so now you're longing for that person. <laughs> so you if know, you were to speak on the guess. person that you wanted to interview as it stands today, who would that you be? You know, if, if we were talking about literally today, yes. uh, I would want to interview some of these kids in Florida mm. wow. who yeah. are out here really, I hope, shaking the nation. Yes. Yeah. You know, you think back to the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. uh, for all of what King did and, and Rosa Parks and others, it was really young people that kept that movement yeah. uh, day to day That's out true. there and alive and changing the nation. And I've been a little disappointed in leadership, mm -hmm. uh, so political yeah. leadership, yeah. black leadership, et cetera, in this country for a little while now. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hoping is that we will see these young people not let go of this yeah. and stay strong and find others who have wherewithal to help them uh, really mm -hmm. create this movement and make change because what has become normal in our society was not normal and is not normal. If I had told you 15, 10, certainly 20 years ago that it would be fairly normal mm -hmm. that kids would be killed in a school, that people would be killed in a church, mm -hmm. which were safe havens years ago, mm -hmm. you would think 20 years ago, no, absolutely not. That mm -hmm. will never happen in America. If you're 20, that's all you've ever really yeah, known. It's commonplace right. yeah. to you. Yeah. If you were born after Columbine, mm -hmm. that's commonplace to you, and that should not be. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll continue to yeah. get these conversations started so one day that it will not be. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. thank you so much, and thank we'll you. make sure we check out Am I Black Enough? Again, on the Brown Sugar app. Ed Gordon, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you, Bo. We'll be right back with more on Rise 360. Stick around.